Yeah, you know, uh, obviously the COVID thing screwed everything up for uh, two years. You know, we we lost uh, an Asian tour and a European tour and, you know, a South American tour. Everything really went down the tubes in the last two years. I, I lost the guys in the band. They're in America now. You know, okay, well, I got a new lineup, but anyway. But uh, point is, is that uh, it's been a difficult, difficult couple of years, like you said. And this COVID shit has really screwed up everybody's life. You know, obviously there were times where, uh, it can, I'll tell you a story about COVID, which was really interesting. Um, maybe a year ago, uh, they, they really had a serious lockdown, like a lockdown I've never seen before. Uh, you, you, to be able to travel in my neighborhood, they had lockdowns in the neighborhood. Even I went to the studio, uh, uh, I went to record some vocals for the, uh, Johansson Speckman record. And, uh, at that time they had like police and army presence on the streets and you had to fill out, you had to fill out like a, a questionnaire, a paper, where you're going and why, you know, I had to call the studio and talk to them and, and lie, you know, stuff. And then I fill out the paper, the information saying I'm going to the studio. I work there. I was just going to sing some, sing some songs. And, and sure enough, I drove maybe, maybe three kilometers from my house and the police and the army stopped me and they're asking me questions and they got their rifles on. And this was really serious lockdown. I've never seen it before in my life, you know? Wow. Okay. You know, obviously in America, like, like uh, in Texas and stuff, there's a couple of places where uh, the Texas uh, Mexico border where they might stop you and talk to you just for a second, roll on the window. Hi, what are you doing? Do you got any uh, illegal people in your car or whatever? And oh, you can see, sir. And they look in and okay, you can go. Okay, that happened before, but but I, I never ran into a situation that was so close to home, like right here. I felt like well, I was in a, a, a it was a crazy situation. I couldn't believe it. You know, I never experienced it before, and that was really off the wall. Thankfully, it only lasted for like maybe you know a month or something, and then everything changed and they opened again. But that was serious, you know. I really, I really felt like we were under control. It was a shitty feeling, you know, like wow, I I can't leave my house anymore. You know, I got to stay home, or you know, <laughs> it was off the wall. Okay, now. Going forward to what you said, now what's going on? Yeah, this is this is horrible. This Ukraine and Russian conflict, and of course I'm nervous about it. I don't want to see World War Three, and of course uh, I don't want to see people dying on, on on either side. You know, I've got friends in Russia, I've got friends in Ukraine, I've got fans there, friends there, whatever you want to say. And and I've been to Russia before. I never made it to your to Ukraine because the tour was canceled because we were supposed to go in April. Well, that's not happening. But just saying that I've got friends in both countries, and nobody wants to see anybody die over this this megalomaniac Putin. I mean, it's I you know I I'm not into politicians in any country. They're just like really tyrants and stuff. You know, they're they only care about themselves. It seems you know they. They don't care about the people, you know. All these politicians are rich and they're living a good life and they don't give a shit about the people around them, you know. It, it's a strange situation. And, and uh, yeah, that's why I write song, anti-songs anti about government and, and politicians all the time because they're terrible. They're tyrants. They, they're, they, they believe they're gods. They're like a god or something and they can tell you what to do. And that's horrible, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> really, now it's hard to say, you know? Okay, I'll say over here. This is, this is going to sound bad, but I'll say over here. The the, uh, the president over here, he's just a drunken idiot. Okay, But anyway, okay, he's got no power at all. He's just a drunken idiot. I don't know. Obviously, uh, all these presidents are puppets. But on the other hand, you know, Putin seems to have a lot of power. I don't know. It seems like a bit of a different situation, you know? Like, we all know that Biden is just a puppet on a string, and he's got people behind him telling him what to do. We know that. Biden is obvious, but Putin, on the other hand, he's a megalomaniac, and 
I think maybe he's really in control of that country. You know, it's quite a bit different than normal politicians is what I'm trying to say. A lot of these presidents, uh, they've got a cabinet behind them telling them what to do. But it seems like like Putin, on the other hand, maybe he really is in control. And it's terrifying. You know, nobody wants World War Three. I, I don't want World War Three. Of course not. You know, no. OK. No. <laughs> I, I, how can you not talk about it? It's going on right now, you know. <laughs> Okay, now, this is where the truth comes in, and I'm not going to lie about it, okay? I did uh, I did five uh, releases with Johansson. We did the uh, Johansson Speckman albums, and, and they are quite, re- they are really good albums. Okay, some are better than others, you know, like the last one was really great. Some of them are really good. But for some reason, the, the uh, record-buying public missed out on these records. Many people don't even know they exist. And I'll be quite honest with you. Johansson contacted me, R- Rogo, he contacted me a while back, uh, more than a year ago. I, I suppose it's already more than a year. Yeah, probably a year ago. And he said, Paul, you know, uh, I'm thinking about uh, this time writing some really simple, straightforward riffs like, you know, Master, uh, Dismember, this kind of stuff. He said, really way back death, this really early kind of punky death metal, real simple short songs back in the day, cool stuff. And he said, would you be interested in checking it out? And so what I said this time is, like I always do, I said, well, you know, send me a couple songs and I'll listen to them and see how I feel about them. And then I'll go to the studio and I'll record the vocals and I'll send them to you and we can discuss it. Okay, so what happened was he sent me the two songs and uh, I wrote the lyrics to the first song in about maybe five minutes. The whole song was finished. Oh. A day later, I spent a couple hours and wrote a second one. And I went to the studio and recorded the first two tracks. And uh, well, let's see, I got it right here. So <laughs> it's like, it was good. Okay. Absolute Power was one of them. And, and the second one was called The Stall. Anyway, Absolute Power is the title track. And it's a great song. But anyway, so I sent the songs back to him and, and he let the guys uh, that recorded the, the drums and he recorded the guitars and the bass. and. He let the guys listen to the song, and he listened to it, to both of them or whatever. And he wrote me back, and he said, fuck, it's incredible. I love it. And I said, well, if you feel that strongly, write the rest of the record and send it to me. Let's go. So then uh, we started talking about it again. He's like, you know, Paul, we really can't release it as a, as a uh, Johansson Speckman again because it's going to get lost in the shuffle. Why don't we use your, your name this time only? Since it is more of a super old school metal record, and he said, "Let's just try it as a Speckman Project Two and see where the ball bounces." And that's where we are. Okay, so the plan—you know—I'm not going to lie about it. The plan wasn't to write a, a new Speckman Project album. We just decided to use it as a name, and I like it. I think it's a really good record, you know. And and what I, I purposely. Uh, I purposely released a track that I thought was a little bit softer than the rest of them on that video called The Fiends of Emptiness. And then, you know, I listened to the song many times, and in the end, it's re- it's a really great song. So I kind of I kind of burned everybody because I, I said, oh, I'm gonna really, I'll let out a softer song, and then the next one a little heavier, and the next one a little heavier. Well, it turns out all three of the tracks that are out are excellent songs. And there's several other songs on the record that are great as well. The whole record, I like it. That's all I can say. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of a good question in a way, too. I, you know, I think Rogan was right. He said, well, if we just release it as a Speckman project, maybe the older fans and the newer fans We'll just see it as the Speckman Project. Oh, let's check out what Speckman's doing. And it seems to be working. I mean, we'll see. I don't know how sales are. You know, the official release date, I think, is maybe April 24th. So we still got a little bit of time. But I think for uh, the few songs that have been released, uh, it's been a positive uh, positive response. So hopefully it works out. <laughs> Patient Records, they're doing a fine job on promotion. I think they're really doing a good job. 
And we have uh, one more album to record for them again in another year. Not in a big rush, but it's a two-album deal. And, of course, I look forward to recording another album in the same vein of, you know, the straight, straight heavy stuff, you know. Well, now when it comes to me, the, you know, it's like uh, I got the Johansson Speckman Project. The last record from Master was in 2018. So for me, it's not really much coming out at a time, only a little bit at a time. The reissues and stuff like that, obviously, are only about money. <laughs> you know, obviously, people are going to keep reissuing my records for the rest of my life and making money from them, and me too. For example, uh, I just signed a new contract with Hammerheart Records. They're going to do the new, uh, the new master record. It'll be out in 2023. We're going to start recording in probably uh, August or September. And, uh, you know, all those reissues are coming out. Oh, yeah, issues are coming out. They're reissuing the entire catalog. Then uh, they're going to reissue. They're going to put out some special box sets as well, which are going to be cool. It'll have, like, the all the master records in a box set with some special stuff, some, de some demo stuff and, and some live concerts and things that many people don't have or never heard before. So that's cool. They're going to do a special box set, I think, for Death Strike and for Abomination, quite a few different things. And we're going to make some decisions on which uh, vinyl to reissue as well. I've got a three-album deal with Hammerheart, and that'll probably go over, you know, maybe the next five to ten years. It's not a big hurry. I'm going to take my time. It's a long contract. And I'm not going to hurry. I'm going to take my time, you know. Like I said, the last master record was 2018. The next one comes out in 2023. That's the longest time between master records ever. And as for like Cadaveric Poison, that was just a one-time project. And it's a really good record. I also like this record as well. But uh, yeah, okay, maybe me and Johansson, we were putting out a release together once every year. But, you know, at the time it seemed to be okay for me. I was just trying to stay busy, you know. Yeah. Very interesting is that... Uh, during the the, uh, the vocals for the Speckman Project, as well as the last Johansson uh, Speckman Project, which is coming out in Mexico sometime this year. But anyway, just going back to reality, is that uh, I had the coronavirus the whole time I was doing the vocals. I didn't even know it. I was really sick as a dog for seven weeks in, uh, in uh, November and December last year. I got sick, like, I think really around Christmas time, right around Christmas. I remember going to the gym, and then I got back, and I was sick. Yeah, so it was actually more like December. But anyway, I was sick for seven weeks, and it was really terrible. But I was making it to the studio once or twice a week to do two songs every week during the time I was sick. So I recorded the vocals for two albums, and I didn't know I had COVID. Yeah, I knew I was really sick, and COVID was around. I was like, oh, that's. I'm just sick. It's not COVID. I don't worry about it, whatever. And then a year later, I went for a blood test at the at the doctor just to check out my blood and see how, you know, just like you do this test on your body when you get to be old like me and make sure you're okay. And they did a blood test and they said, oh, you had COVID a year ago. You still have antibodies in you. That's how I found out. But I'm just trying to make the point is that uh, so these records, I don't know how I did it. I was really sick, but I wasn't, I wasn't sick to not make it to the studio, you know? <laughs> I still had to drive that 18 kilometers each way to go and sing a few songs, and I did it every every week, you know? Because metal, you know, you, you're still going to keep going with your metal, sick or not. Okay, thankfully I didn't die, you know? <laughs> I suppose I could have. I got lucky, all right? But anyway, all right. For me, it's a habit. Um, like, for example, when I do, like, uh, I'll give you an example. Like, when I do the next master record, how I work with that one is we record the music first, and then for the next four to six weeks, I go in and I sing like we said. I go in in the mornings and I'll sing like two songs every week, sometimes at two in a day, sometimes four in a week. It really depends. But the point is, is that then... Uh, after the after the lyrics are done, then I'll go back and I'll check them out. And sometimes I'll start all over again. Sometimes I don't like it. I spend a lot of time on lyrics these 
these days is you know is singing I, I you know i'm old and i want it to sound good so i i, I do it a lot I, I try it a lot harder let's say than i did years ago years ago i used to just blast through the vocals and try and get them done in one day you know you know five six hours and i'm done with the whole album the vocals are done i fucking that's it you know but now i spend a lot of time on it because i wanted to be excellent and i like to do double vocals and I'm not using effects on the vocals. Only the only effects on the vocals on the albums I use in this day and age are my own voice. You know, I got all kinds of tricks that I made myself with my own voice, and and that's why it sounds so cool on a lot of these songs. It's from my own effects, you know, natural effects. You know. No, how it works with Roga is. Uh, how it works with Roga is that my wife just came home. <laughs> anyway, how it works with Roga is that uh, he and uh, the members of his bands out there and uh, they uh, they record the music and they send it to me, and then I go to the studio after I've written the lyrics and then I go and sing the songs with their recordings and then I send it back to them and then they they mix and master it there and then we argue about how the vocals aren't loud enough every time and <laughs> stuff like this, you know. And uh, or the bass isn't loud enough or whatever, and, and it worked fine this way. But the point is, is that um, with master, it'll never be done that way, you know. With master, I have a real band, and I prefer to do it that way, you know, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll get the songs and and they're done already. Like when when Roga sends me the songs, they're finished. The music is completely finished, except for the vocals. And so the problem with that is then is that you can't make corrections because they're already done. So, you know, if a, let's say a song, uh, let's say the lyrics go four times or whatever, they're only, they're only going to go four times. And a lot of times uh, in the situation with him, I actually haven't told him about it. I'm telling you the first time. <laughs> I'm going to tell him about it when we do the next Beckman project. But the point is, is I let him write the songs the way he wants to write them and then he sends them to me and I write the lyrics the way I want to write them and, and I sing them. But the point is, is that many times I would prefer to have the certain parts maybe twice as long, you know, yeah. or one of his cool riffs four more times and it's already finished. It's already too late. So on the next Beckman album with him, I'm going to talk to him a little bit more about what I want. I'm going to let him write it how he wants, but I'm just going to tell him, you know, you're going to make the parts longer the songs, instead of being two minutes and 30 seconds, can be twice the amount. You can make them longer, you know. I don't want to tell them how to write, but, uh, you know, this next time we're going to talk about a little bit more, you know. Now, as for Master, um, I, I I work on the songs with the band for months at a time. You know, we work for months, you know, obviously. And I write these songs that are ridiculously long. Sometimes they're like seven minutes long, but they're great songs, you know. And like with the Speckman Project, most of the songs are like three minutes or three and a half minutes. They're great songs too, but they're really short. And I, and personally, I like longer songs because I can get away with it. They're not boring, you know. They're long, yeah, okay. They're sometimes they're ridiculously long, but then I check them, or you know, people write me, oh, yeah, the song is like seven minutes, but it's such a great song. I'm like, well, you know, I'm writing from my heart, and that's how it is, you know. Not to say that he's not writing from his heart. I'm sure he is too. But we come from different worlds. He's younger and I'm older, and that may be it, you know. Mm -hmm. Seven Day, for example, and, you know, a lot of the later master records, I, I wrote a lot of long songs, and I like to write that way. It's just the way I write, you know. And he writes shorter songs, and maybe it's just the way he writes as well. I'm not here to criticize. I'm just saying that, like, if you listen to the first uh, Speckman Project album, there's some ridiculously long songs on there, like Live for Free. It's just ridiculous, you know. But they're cool songs, so don't get me wrong. So what I want to do on the second Speckman, or, or let's say the third album, the third Speckman project, second one with Roga, is I want to make a few longer songs. And so we'll talk about it when we get to that point. As for Master, we're going to keep, you know, right now I'm just working on getting the band ready for the concerts coming up. We have like uh, a show coming up in Germany, and then we have a tour coming up uh, also in March and April. We have like 10 shows in uh, Spain and Portugal. So right now I'm just trying to get the band together. The drummer, uh, Peter Baichi, he just got, got back into the band with us. And so, you know, it's work after 10 years and not playing with somebody. He's a good drummer. Don't get me wrong. It's going to work out. But 
were practicing a lot, trying to get comfortable with them, you know. I had the same drummer for 16 years, and it got to the point when, you know, when you're with somebody for 16 years, like Zenek Predlowski, whatever, you know what he's going to do, where he's going to do it, how he's going to end it after 16 years. You feel it, you know. Then, uh, you know, I had the U.S. lineup for two years, and that broke up because of COVID. So now uh, Alex, uh, Alex Nas Clever, he came back from the previous lineup in Czech. And then Peter, who, uh, like I said, he was on tour with us in, uh, in Brazil. We had him for about a year in 2010. But this is a long time ago, 12 years ago. So I'm just saying right now I'm at that point where we're practicing and just trying to get comfortable with each other. Sure, we can play the songs. Me and the guitar player, after 16 years and a two- to three-year break, we're still tight. And the drummer's good. But I'm just making the point that it takes time to get comfortable with people. You know, you can sure you can go up and play the songs and stuff, but endings and things like this, it takes a while to, to feel it from each other. Yeah. And I'm trying to give the best performance possible. Of course, you know that. So this is really important to me. So several times, you know, I practice, oh, I'm stopping. No, the end's got to be a little bit longer. You got to relax. Take it. Oh, slow. Oh, and then we do it again. And all of a sudden, it's perfect. I'm like, yeah, okay, now you got to try and do that tomorrow now. <laughs> You know? Yeah, it probably would have continued without COVID. COVID screwed it up. They're in America. They want to stay in America. I'm here. I want to stay here. That's what happened, really. You know, you, I didn't want to go to America for what? You know, I have a comfortable life here for 20, almost 22 years in the Czech Republic. You see, I'm sitting in my house in my bedroom, right, one of my rooms right now, my little office. I didn't want to go to America, and I didn't want to record online. Both of the guys were saying, oh, you know, we get a drummer, you know, Russ, and, oh, yeah, we could, you know, you can send me the riffs and just tell me how many times each one goes, and I'll do a great drum part, and he would have. I know that. He's a great drummer, and the guitar player as well, great players, but I refused to do it online, and I told him, we can't do it this way. you got to get your ass out here, and neither of the guys made any effort to come out here, so they're in, in the U.S., and now I'm working with other guys again, you know? There you go. No, we yeah. never talked we never talked about it. There was nothing to discuss. He said a bunch of shit online that he shouldn't have said. And and obviously after three years, he was playing with his band Shark, and they're out there playing a few, you know, a couple of shows a year. They had a really big hit of an album, I think number two on the charts in the Czech Republic. But the point is, uh, once I said to him, uh, are you interested in jamming again? Well, boom, he was interested right away. He said yes. <laughs> so apparently uh, time uh, heals things. So, some things are healed by time. Not everything, but some things heal in time. And obviously, you know, he, uh, he knows that I can offer more work and more concerts. And he has a bigger opportunity for, to travel with me around the world, you know. His band here is in the Czech Republic, and they only play in the Czech Republic, and they only play in Slovakia when they can, and that's it. My band travels around the world, you know? And for him, it's more of an opportunity. I, I imagine that's why he said yes, because he has an opportunity to, to make more money, of course, and play more concerts. And I'm happy that he's back, because he's an excellent guitar player. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm happy he's back, <laughs> you know? Uh, that, now, that's a good question. Uh, Zdenek, he's in a, he's in a uh, Czech famous heavy metal band called Citron from many years ago. And uh, he's happy with what he's doing. And uh, Alex and Zdenek are still playing in Shark a few shows a year as well. And, uh, we, and just to say that there's no hard feelings, in my opinion, is that we rehearse in the same place. Zdenek, uh, Zdenek has a drum set in the rehearsal room where we used to rehearse. Okay. I I have a drum set with the drummer who's playing with us in in the rehearsal room as well, and all of our equipment is in there. And I guess if there was a problem, we we wouldn't be in the same room now, you know. And that's my opinion. And and we've seen each other two or three times, and we shake hands and how you doing and how you know everything okay and and I leave and whatever, you know. We're adults here, you know. Okay, they said some things about me years ago and. They weren't very nice, but apparently, you know, 
time changes, you know, whatever, you know. He's happy what he's doing. And uh, Alex has got Alex has got the best of both worlds. <laughs> he's got both of us, you know. Still got both of us now, and and now he's working with both of us. I think for him it's a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And, okay. I, you know, and of course, I wish him the best. I wish Zenik the best too, of course. And the same thing with the guys in America, Pat and and Rust. And I told them both. I wrote him a message on on Facebook or whatever. I wish you guys the best in the future and more power to you. Good luck. You know, I, I'm not looking for enemies. <laughs> you know, of course. They were looking for me. He'd been contacting me, Michael, the owner. For two or three years, he kept trying to get me to sign with Master. And I told him I had this project, Johansson Speckman, and and he wasn't interested. And I said, I got the, what about the Speckman project? And he loved the record. And right away, he signed us right away. He wanted to do a two-album deal immediately. And then uh, Hammerheart Records, he'd been trying to get me for the last 10 years. And we had some some deals, obviously, you know, some reissues we did together. And, and eventually... He finally made me an offer I couldn't refuse about three or four months ago. And now I would hammer heart for three albums and I would emancipation for one more record. But whatever. The point is I'm working, I'm happy, and that's what's important. And this is all I do. I only play music and go to the gym. That's it. Exercising yeah. and playing music. And going to the post office. I got to do that too because I have a lot of orders every day, you know. Uh, it, w- it will be available in the States and Europe on Hammer Heart Records in a couple of months. <laughs> before the year. Before the year is out. You know? And actually, uh, the Chinese uh, record release, uh, they were interested, and I gave them two bonus tracks that were actually recorded at the same time. And uh, they were happy to put it out. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you get these offers you can't refuse, you know. I wanted to get a record out in China, of course. You know, that was the point, you know. And sometimes you get these offers and I take them, you know, they're not a lot of money a lot of times, but whatever. It's just nice to get a record out in China. That means someday I can go to China, maybe, you know, I hope. You know, I'd like to play some shows in China one day if, if the world ever gets back to normal where you can do it, you know. Yeah. And, eight, and actually a guy wrote me from Russia today and I said the same thing to him, you know. He, uh, he, he and his uh, buddy brought us to Russia in 2011, and I said to him, he sent me a picture from one of the shows, and I said to him, I hope someday that your country and the rest of Europe and everyone get along again so we can come back. You know, of course. This has nothing to do with the, the metal fans in Russia. This is the government. This has nothing to do with the people. This is these crappy governments screwing up and trying to fuck with everybody's lives. It's terrible, you know? It's yeah. nothing to do with metal, you know. We're a bunch of long-haired, freaky guys, or you know what I mean. A bunch of dudes that are into metal, and it has nothing to do with this stupid governmental, politic, political bullshit. I want to get out and play some concerts. I know everybody else wants to do it too, and COVID fucked up everything too for the concerts. Right now, it's looking like, knock on wood, concerts are, ma- are going to start happening again. I'm hoping. The idea was just, uh, you know, to get my name out there again. You know, what the heck, you know, it's like uh, I paid for the uh, cassette. So I said, oh, since I'm doing it myself, why don't we just make it Speckman Records? What the hell, you know? So I'm selling them myself. I'm making, you know, making them in Portugal and, you know, at the, at the place in Portugal. And, and I just thought it was a good idea to get the name out there. It's called Speckman Records. And maybe in the future I will start a label. Maybe. I don't know. I've, I've always thought about it, you know, but it'll give me something more to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point is, is that, that's how I make money, you know? of course. I'm not sharing with 10 million people, you know. I'm, I'm, making the, I'm making the hoodies like you got, you know, and I'm selling them and I'm sending them or whatever, and I'm making the money from them. You know? Of course, it's a better way for me, you know. And a lot of these record companies, I mean, okay, not these last few deals, but, but before, uh, a lot of the record deals, you know, it's for cash and for products. So, you know, it's better for me to, <clears throat> to get the CDs and the vinyls and sell them myself. I'm getting them for free, and then I'm turning around and selling them, and, and that's, how I make them, that's how I'm surviving, you know? 
And it's like uh, a lot of the American bands, not all of them, and I'm not going to say who, but there's a lot of a lot of American bands that still have part-time jobs. They have to work all the time, you know, working at fast food joints or whatever, working at Subway or whatever. I'm not. I'm working in Speckman. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, you know, okay, uh, you know, I'm not a millionaire or nothing like that. I'm not saying that, but but I'm okay. I'm comfortable. Everything's fine, you know. Life is good, rolling on, you know? And no, it's, it's, it's better here, certainly. It's better here. But then, you know, you have to look at things in perspective, too. You know, cars are expensive here. Houses are expensive here. And, and I have them. So it's hard to say if it would be true, you know. I guess you'd have, if you're living in America, maybe you have to have a good job to survive. I don't know. But then again, these guys aren't, uh, a lot of these guys, I don't think they're online selling shit every day like I am. I'm fucking hustling shit day and night, you know? I don't know. I'm not sure. That's well, a good question. Many people ask that, you know? I'm glad I don't live in America. It's a crappy country. It was great when I was growing up, when I was a younger man, but when I look at what's going on now, it's, it's not such a great country anymore. I, I'm, I'm, I feel happier and safer living right here in Czech. And that's the truth. You know, I've been here for 22 years and I don't regret it at all. You know, it was the best move I ever made. Believe me. Not, not really because the, the system has always been shitty. It's just shittier at different times, but it's always been shitty. The system, you know, I don't know how free we really are, you know. <laughs> Freedom is overrated. That's what I wanted to say. That's a good, that's a good topic. A good thing on there. Freedom is overrated. <laughs> you know, I, I have to say that, it, I mean, it's scary with all these fucking, uh, all these new controls and stuff, you know. Yeah. They're trying to control us even more and more. It wasn't so bad 25 years ago. It's horrible now. They want to know where you're going, what you're doing, and. I don't like that at all. That's what I was saying with you when I when, we, when I got stopped by the by the police in the army. It was pretty terrifying for me. I thought, wow, is this the future? And it seems like maybe it is the future. That was like a small taste of maybe where we're headed. You know, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. It's good. It's food for thought, and it'll be good on my next record, and I'll be able to write about it. <laughs> good point. No, no, no. Uh, Bru that's the second time. Uh, the White Crow and the Black Crow records. Uh, Bruno contacted me. In, you know, he and I have known each other since uh, since uh, 1999 when we toured together in Europe. It's a long time ago. Of course, we know each other. And he was obviously in Kravitar and me too. So we, we know each other very well. And uh, both times he wrote me, you know, Paul, I'm doing a new record and, and I have a poem and can you read it over and, and maybe correct a few words if you need to? And sometimes I corrected them, you know, whatever fix. I actually helped them correct all the lyrics on the Black Crow. There weren't so many mistakes, only a few. But I sat down in the studio and helped them fix them because that's what I do, you know. Many uh, bands over the years have sent me their lyrics in check and asked me to read them and fix them. And, and I do it. And I did it for free every time. It doesn't matter. I like it. I'm looking for things to do. I'm bored. <laughs> Somebody send me their lyrics. I'm working on it for the next few days. I'm happy. I'm smiling. Okay, yeah. I got some work to do. I'm looking. You know, I'm bored sometimes. But I'm just saying that he offered it to me both times, and I went to the studio and and uh, did the poems for him. And and he was really he's really tough. You know, he's a tough guy. I had to do the poem like four or five times. When I thought the first time was perfect, he had me do it like four or five times, and. A lot of times he picked like the fourth or the fifth one, but I don't care, whatever. I'm just trying to help him out. I was there for an hour both times and what's fine. He's a good guy, of course. Yeah. And people, you know, it's, it's okay. You know. <laughs> well, I'm Speckman, so it's normal though. <laughs> you know? I, you know, it's like, a, it's, a, it's a photo that my wife took in front of our house by the bushes with a knife. You know, I'm standing there with a knife from Poland. And uh, the record company just said to me, you know, Emancipation, whatever. They said to me, Paul, we want to do something similar.
to the first album. And I said, okay, you know, I like the cover. I think I think they did a really good job. But personally, I like the picture inside better, where uh, it's my uh, face is a skeleton, you know. It's half, you know. Yeah. I like it better. That's what I chose for the cover. But, uh, you know, I have to think, I, I just had to go with it because Michael, he uh, he picked the other cover, and I just thought well, after 18 years of experience, maybe he knows. I don't know. But personally, I would have liked it reverse. But it doesn't matter, okay? You don't know, you can't always get what you want. No. No, we talked about all the main things. Everything <laughs> important. In my opinion, everything important, Neil. The past, the future. Actually, we didn't talk a lot about the past, but it doesn't matter because I don't live in the past. I live in the future. And I'm hoping there's a bright future for everyone, you and me included. You know? Yeah. I'm all right. I'm okay. Sure. Stay really? in touch, Neil. Cheers. Bye. Thanks.